So we just heard some incredibly fascinating stories about all of our cultural heritage. What I do is kind of different. I help shape pretend history. Um, in the DC universe, there are a lot of exciting characters like Batman and Catwoman and Huntress. And I got to write the origin story of Huntress. It's called Huntress Year One. And it's looking back at the makings of a strong female superhero. Um, so I'm going to show you some of my favorite pages in the comic. And by the way, it was a comic first, and then it was collected uh, in this collected edition as a book. I know a lot of people aren't uh, sure about what's the difference between a comic book and a graphic novel. Neil Gaiman said, I'm a comic book writer. Being informed I write graphic novels is like, I think I'm a hooker, and I'm told, no, you're a lady of the evening. <laughs> so anyway, but I, I like uh, getting, getting to be an author for this graphic novel. So I'm going to go through these as quickly as I can. I tried to create a film noir feel. When you write a graphic novel and you're not the illustrator, you're the director, the casting director, the lighting director, the costume director. And uh, this is Helena, our hero, and her brother growing up in Gotham, and their father is the Don of Gotham and is beating their mother. Uh, afterwards, Helena's fuming at her father, and she's not afraid of authority, and she's a very devout Catholic girl, and she just tells him to his face she wishes he was dead. A few minutes later, she actually does regret this because Omerta, an assassin sent from the boss of bosses in Sicily, winds up coming in and killing the entire family in the middle of this dinner, except for Helena. And this is that moment that all children in the DC universe go through where your entire family is murdered. And, <laughs> and, then you, and then that sets you on a path. And eventually, someday, you become either a superhero or a supervillain. And the question is, which will you become? I'm not following my notes. Uh, so I'll just, I'll just do this without the notes. Uh, so she is sent to Sicily to live with a family of assassins. Uh, and uh, she has this incredible tutor who I actually modeled this woman after a famous uh, Italian movie star from the 50s. And um, see that set? She's watching Rigoletto. Did anybody see Rigoletto at the San Francisco Opera a couple of years ago? That's that set. So people who know me see these little things. They say, oh, that's from, you know. Uh, so anyway, let's see. So she's in Sicily. And she, oops, I think I missed one there. Oh, no, okay. She grows up and she falls in love with absolutely the wrong man. Um, he is the future Don of Gotham, Tony Angelo, another mob family. Uh, she, um, this very elderly gentleman is the boss of bosses who tried to have her entire family killed, but for some reason she was spared. And now she's all grown up and he'd like to have her killed now. And his second in command, a man whose nickname is the Pope, he's not the Pope, but he, Anyway, uh, does anyone recognize uh, the photo reference I provided for that was John Forsyth during his dynasty years? <laughs> it's anyway. Okay, so um, so anyway, um, and he's, there's some there's some fun mafia talk here, misogyny, hilarious. Um, okay, so she eventually gets a costume together um, and uh, goes to confront Stefano Mandragora because he ordered the hit. She finds out he ordered the hit on her family all those years ago. And um, he says, I can't read this from here, but he says something along the lines of, you must be an American. We don't have capes in Italy. Um, <laughs> and can you read the dialogue from the audience? No? Oh, that's too bad. OK. And uh, so anyway, but she actually has been raised in Italy, but that is a, a, an American phenomenon. So then he signals to his goons to come in, and he throws a knife at her, and she catches it in midair, and then on, which I'm able to do. So that's realistic. You can do that. It's, um, OK. Then she winds up having to go to Gotham, because after she takes care of him, there's still the matter of the man who pulled the trigger, Omerta. And he is in Gotham. So she starts to encounter all the Gotham characters. She vowed she'd never go back, but here she is. And uh, Catwoman is basically telling her, I'll help you out, but you have to remain independent. That's what I want. I don't want you to work for me or the bat. And she asks, uh, and Helena, AKA the Huntress, our hero, asks Catwoman, how long have you two been chasing each other around, you and Batman? And 
Catwoman says, well, two, maybe two or three years, but it feels like 70. <laughs> uh, Catwoman also says, I know smoking ages you, but I'm only 29, darling. And um, see, in Gotham, nobody ever gets older than 29. I think that's why I like it there. Uh, inauspiciously, she beats up Bruce Wayne immediately, thinking he's in bed with the mob. He was actually trying to set up the mob, and he's having a mob wedding at Wayne Manor, and she says, oh, I'm really afraid of you. What are you going to do, beat me at golf? And he says, yes, I think I could, also at dressing for a wedding. Uh, anyway, so um, w she winds up reenacting, not meaning to, but reenacting her childhood trauma with o Omerta coming in, uh, into the old house that's now abandoned and boarded up, boarded up where uh, the scene happened in her childhood. And this is the cover of the book, and that is the beginning of the story of the Huntress. Thank you. Thank you.